Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 here from JGN Games, and we're going to be making an elevator that goes up and down without writing any code whatsoever. Alright, so the basic idea behind this is visual scripting, and we're actually going to be using this in the next one when we look into making our lever when we get into um, making the lever pull down and such. We're going to actually be using uScript to code this. And so I decided that we might as well do an introduction to visual scripting. So you may be wondering, what is visual scripting? Basically, visual scripting is the idea of coding without typing any code, um, having some engine or algorithm do it for you. And so that's what we're doing today. So for beginners, I prefer to I would prefer to you to start off with uScript. It's the one we're going to be using this, and it's free. So the way you get it is you hit Control Nine or Command Nine and you'll get to the assets store. Then you want to type in uScript, <clears throat> and then you're going to go to the personal edition. It's free. Um, the only downside is it has a watermark, so you will have to pay for one of them in order to um, actually be able to make your game. But just for testing things out, we're going to use the free version, and so you just click this button right here, which will say download, and then you hit import. I've already imported it, and so I have no need to do anything else. All right, so now let's go ahead and you'll have all these folders. I just made this basic scene and you can see that I have an elevator and a level two. And the elevator is just a very basic thing. It's just got, I've just imported the first person, I mean the characters package and the prototyping package. And those are the only two packages I've actually imported. And so, like from Unity, and then I've used the uScript obviously. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna animate the elevator. So we are going to go to animation by hitting control 6 so you can just do like that and I'm going to make sure I have the elevator select I'm going to click create alright and I'm going to make sure I save this outside of here just so that it's easier to find it and I'm going to call this elev up and I'm going to hit save alright so now we have this right here this elevator controller and this animation if you don't know this is more like a clip and consider this more like the movie itself this is what controls when the clips go where um, all right, so let's go ahead and I'm going to click Add Property, Transform, Position. And I'm going to set this to 30. All right, on this one, I'm going to change this one to 3.7. That's what I worked at when I was working on this tutorial. And then I'm going to click this red circle button right here. And now we can scrub through it to see that the elevator actually goes up. Great. Now we are going to go create new clip, and we're going to call this Elev Down. And we're going to do the exact same thing, except on this one, we are going to start off on the first keyframe at 3.7. And we're going to go to the next keyframe and so that, keep that at 0 0.06. So now you can see that the elevator goes down. We're almost done with animating. We just have one last thing to do. The first thing to do is to go into these clips and turn the loop time off. This just makes sure that your clip doesn't loop over and over and over again. Then we're going to jump into the elevator by double clicking this and we are going to move these off to the side. We're not going to be working with transitions yet, but we're going to hit right click, create state, empty, just so that we can have an idle state for so that it doesn't start off with going up or going down. So I'm going to click on this. This has no clip on it, so it will remain idle. And I'm going to set this as a layer default state. All this does basically is when you start up the game, the elevator doesn't go up in the air or doesn't like come down from the air. It just stays on where it is, and then we can transition through this through scripting. All right, so now let's go into uScript. We are going to hit uScript. Um, you can open this by going to Tools, uScript, uScript Editor, and we are going to create a new graph. I'm going to make sure I have a new graph by hitting File, New Graph. Whoops. And I'm, I like to work in maximize view just because I feel like it works a ton better. All right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define when we're going to let this go. Now, there's a few things that you need for doing input and just for basic things. You can see that we have actions, conditions, events. And so that's a bunch of things. Um, action is more like what it's going to do. So these are like after inputs. Conditions are like um, comparing things, like comparing a boolean, or, which we're going to be doing, or comparing a string. And then events is like something happening to produce the action. The easiest way to do this, though, is to create, it's just to search. So I'm going to search input, and I'm going to click on this input events. We need this one to start off with. 
So this just determines that we are going to be looking for an input related event. But you'll notice that we don't have anywhere to put a key in yet. And that's where we have this input events filter. By clicking on this button, we now drag this on input event in here. And now we have a key code. Now I'm going to set this to E. So I'm going to scroll down. So I see E. I'm going to keep it like that. Now I have a few options, but the one we want to have is input down. And so now we are going to determine what it's going to do. So what we're going to do is we are going to create the first animation. Thing. So I'm just going to go up here and type in animate. Um, all right. And so we are going to say animator play. And this one will play an animation state. And so the way we're going to do this is we are going to have input down. And then we are going to do... Now, this is where it gets tricky. Um, you have these slots down here. And so these are where you create your variables that work with this. So first of all, we have to have our top target object. And you don't need this. You don't need variables for these two as you can do these in there. If I wanted to, though, I could go ahead and right click on this white dot and create a linked variable. And I could call this um, key. And I could set this to E. And if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. But I'm just going to leave it like this for now just because it's simple. All right. Another nice thing is if you want to use these variables in the inspector window, which is what we're going to be doing, you would just click make public. So I'm going to leave this right here because I like the, the E key. And so I'm just going to leave it like that. Now we're going to need to create the linked variables for the target. Then we're going to need to create whoops, the state name. And we can leave the layer alone. The target we are going to name elevator. This is just like we're naming our own. Um, it's just like we're naming a variable in C sharp. Then we're going to go to string. Now this is actually the state name. So we are going to set this to up and in. All right. And now that we have this, we can now save this. Save graph. And we are going to save this as elevator Anim, anim. Um, now you're going to get this window. It's going to say this uScript graph has not been assigned to the master game object yet. Select yes to assign it now or no to manually assign. Just hit no. You don't want to do that yet. And now you'll see that it is all set. Oh, I don't know why it's telling me to sign in my Unity account. That's weird. Um, so now we are going to not demaximize this or minimize this. And then we are going to go into here. Now, we need to add this script to the elevator object. So the way we're going to do this is we are going to go to the uScript project, um, uScripts, generate, and we're going to look for this elevator enum component, and we're going to drag this on top of the elevator. We actually don't want to use the elevator enum. We just want to use the component one, because this is what you're actually going to put on your game object. Now, if it's working properly, you should see a little U pop up right next to that object. We're going to click on the elevator, and if I scroll down, you should see that we don't have any exposed variables yet. And that's because we haven't put made any public yet. So I'm going to go back into uScript. And I'm going to maximize this. And I'm going to go to these two. And I'm going to hit, click Make Public. Make Public. I'm going to minimize this. Jump back into the scene view. And now if I go to the elevator, you'll see... Okay, that's another thing. I forgot to mention this. So one of the problems with uScript is it doesn't auto save for you. It's not a problem, but you just got to be cautious of it. So you'll notice that I haven't saved this yet. And when it says compiling, that's when you know it's working. And then this should turn into a list right here in just a minute. All right, now this is a list. And so we're going to set the elevator object to elevator. I'm going to set the up animation to, and I'm going to go back to my assets folder, and this is elev up. It's very important that you select the prop, you type it in, it is case sensitive. All right, so now we are going to hit play. I'm going to turn around, and when I hit E, it goes up, but we're hitting E again, and it won't come down. And now we're going to get into some comparing and some conditions. So we're going to hit Control-P, 
to jump out of that, and we are going to go back to our U script. Now the reason that this didn't work is because we haven't scripted for a way so that this will work with two animations. We only set this to work with one animation. So we are actually going to delete this transition, or this state transition, and we are going to move these over and up a little bit. Now the way we do this is we can just type in bool. Now we're going to get this compare bool. We're going to want to click this, and then we're going to drag the input down to the end. So now we're going to create a boolean value. So I'm going to create a length variable called checker, or check. We don't want to make this one public. We're going to set it to false by default because we want the elevator to be down when we start the game. But you can certainly change that around if you'd like to. All right, so now we need a way for this. So if it's false, if the thing is down, we want the up animation to play. But if the down animation, but if it's not, then we want it to play the true animation. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it. And I'm also going to copy this and paste it down here. Just drag that right there. Now the state name, we can't use the same one or else it won't work. So we are going to create a new linked variable. And we are going to name this down. And we are going to make this public. All right, so now we have this. This should work. But the problem is, is that after the bool is, after this, we don't have a way to set the boolean after these animations play. So we can actually use the set bool function and we're, since this one is coming in from false, we want this to output to true. And because this one is coming in as true, we want this to output as false. Now, it's also important that we create the linked variable here and we name it case sensitive. This is case sensitive to check. Now you'll see that if we change the value on this, it changes the value on this one right here. And that's the whole reason we made this setup right here. That should be all. So I'm going to hit file, save graph. And I'm going to minimize. And it's going to work. All right. And now, if we go to our elevator, we should now have this. And I'm going to type in elev down. All right. And now you'll see that when I click play, I turn around and I hit E, the elevator goes up. And when I hit E again, the elevator comes back down. And we can even ride this elevator up to the second level. So that's basically an intro to visual scripting in Unity. Um, I highly recommend you guys go get uScript. If you guys like uScript, don't forget to pay the extra $35 just so that you can get rid of that watermark and you can have all the features. Thanks for watching this tutorial, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions whatsoever about visual scripting or uScript in general. And make sure to like the video because, so that this will pop up more on the Unity tutorials and people will be able to learn more about visual scripting. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.